Could hydrogen, born directly from sunlight, become part of our everyday lives? The question sounds almost poetic, like something out of science fiction. Yet it carries the weight of possibility. Imagine energy drawn not from deep mines or hidden reserves, but from the sky itself. A resource as old as the universe, reshaped into fuel by the touch of light. For decades, this vision has hovered on the edge of reality, too fragile to hold. Now, quiet experiments on rooftops are turning whispers into proof. The dream of sunlight into fuel is no longer just a dream. A dream from the past. The vision of a world powered by hydrogen is older than many might think. In the early 1970s, a South African chemist named John Bokris spoke of what he called the hydrogen economy. At the time, the world was shaken by oil crises and worried about dependence on fossil fuels. His idea sounded bold, even radical. What if we could move away from oil and coal and instead build a society powered by sunlight and water? Hydrogen, he believed, could be the key. It would not be mined from the ground, but created wherever people lived. It could drive cars, heat homes, and power industries. It could support a lifestyle that many in the post-war West were eager to protect, growth, comfort, and prosperity, but without the guilt of pollution. Yet even as his words inspired imagination, the barriers were obvious. The chemistry was understood, but the tools were clumsy. Solar cells were expensive, and the process of splitting water demanded more energy than most could affordably provide. Industry and politics were not ready for such a change. Still, the idea never vanished. It lingered in laboratories, in small pilot projects, in the dreams of researchers who believed time would eventually catch up. And now, half a century later, that same dream is returning in a new form, compact hydrogen modules placed quietly on rooftops, whispering that perhaps the future Bakris imagined is finally ready to begin. What are solar hydrogen modules? At first glance, these modules look simple, like flat panels that could be mistaken for solar cells. But they are not built to produce electricity. Instead, they create hydrogen directly. They take water, sunlight, and little else, and turn them into a gas that can be stored, transported, and used when needed. Unlike traditional systems, they do not depend on power lines or fuel deliveries. They stand alone, quietly working in silence. In Belgium, at the Catholic University of Leuven, researchers placed these modules on an ordinary rooftop. Even in a country known for cloudy skies, the results were striking. A single unit produced about 250 liters of hydrogen a day. Over a year, that added up to more than 90,000 liters. Enough to imagine homes and small businesses running partly on rooftop fuel. The promise is simple, but powerful. Independent energy, created where it is needed. But before the dream becomes real, we need to understand what makes these modules work. The science behind PEC. The heart of these modules is a process called photoelectrochemical water splitting, or PEC. The word sounds complex, but the idea is easy to picture. Sunlight falls on special materials. These materials wake up when light touches them. Inside, electrons begin to move, leaving behind empty spaces called holes. Together they form pairs, electrons and holes opposite charges born from light. If they are kept apart, something remarkable happens. The holes stay on one side and pull electrons from nearby water molecules. In doing so, water is broken into oxygen and hydrogen ions. The electrons, freed by sunlight, move to the other side. There, they meet the hydrogen ions and give them the missing charge. 
What forms are not just gas, but fuel? It is similar to electrolysis, where electricity splits water. The difference is that PEC does not need an external current. The light itself provides the push. Sunlight becomes chemical energy, stored in hydrogen. In silence, the reaction is almost poetic, light breaking water into breath and flame. It is science, yes, but it also feels like alchemy. From theory to practice, ideas in the lab mean little until they meet the real world. That is where companies have stepped in. In the United States, a firm called Sun Hydrogen is working on modules that use layers of advanced semiconductors like cadmium telluride and copper indium diselenide. These materials respond strongly to light, helping to drive the reaction forward. They aim to scale the technology for mass use, one panel at a time. In Europe, another path is being followed. From research at the Catholic University of Leuven, a company named Solheed has emerged. Their design combines solar technology with PEC. The modules not only split water, but they can also draw moisture directly from the air. Even in Belgium's wet, cloudy climate, each unit produces hundreds of liters of hydrogen a day. The trials go further. Farmers have tested these panels above their fields, letting crops like spinach grow under them while the modules create fuel above. It is a glimpse of a future where agriculture and clean energy live side by side, each strengthening the other. The promise and the catch. At first, the numbers sound disappointing. Most solar hydrogen modules today reach an efficiency between 9 and 15 percent. That means only a small share of sunlight becomes usable hydrogen. In comparison, modern wind turbines convert about half the energy of the wind into power. And traditional electrolysis can achieve much higher percentages when supplied with steady electricity. But these comparisons can be misleading. Electrolysis requires electricity first, and creating that electricity also loses energy. If solar panels provide the current, the chain of steps reduces the final output sharply. Suddenly, the 9 to 15 percent achieved by peak panels does not seem so weak. It is a direct conversion, light into hydrogen, without the middle stage. The promise lies in this simplicity. No cables running from a distant power plant. No need for a constant external supply. Just a module, sunlight, and water. The catch, of course, is that efficiency must improve to make the system practical at scale. Every percentage point gained means more gas, more independence, and more hope. Yet behind the progress, the same quiet question lingers. How much further can science go? The challenges ahead. Every new technology carries hidden struggles. For solar hydrogen modules, the first obstacle is the material itself. The semiconductors that drive the reaction do not capture all parts of sunlight. Some only respond to ultraviolet rays, ignoring most of the spectrum. Others wear down quickly when exposed to the acidic electrolyte. Finding materials that last and absorb more light is still an open challenge. Then there is the rhythm of nature. Sunlight does not flow steadily. It rises, fades, disappears, and returns. Each cycle switches the reaction on and off. Conventional electrolyzers prefer stability, not the constant stop and start of a day-night world. Over time, this can weaken performance and shorten lifespan. Storage adds another layer. Hydrogen must be captured, compressed, or piped into tanks. Without proper systems, the fuel risks escaping into the air. Infrastructure to handle this safely and cheaply is still rare. So while the promise shines brightly, the path forward remains uneven. The modules whisper of freedom, but their voices are still fragile. Waiting for answers only deeper research can bring. The price problem. Even if science works, 
cost remains the heaviest barrier. Right now, hydrogen made with solar modules is far more expensive than hydrogen from fossil fuels. Estimates place it near $10 for every kilogram produced. While steam methane reforming, the standard fossil method, can cost less than two. That gap is wide enough to slow adoption. Early systems always carry this weight. Small production runs make each unit costly. Specialized materials add more. And building the pipes, tanks, and safety measures needed to move hydrogen only increases the price further. Companies like Solhad hope to change this. They plan to bring costs down by scaling up, building semi-automated production lines by the end of this decade. If they succeed, modules could one day approach the affordability of solar panels. But until then, the dream asks for patience. The question is not only whether we can make hydrogen from sunlight, but whether we can afford to let it grow. What it could mean for us. Imagine rooftops that no longer just catch the sun to light a few bulbs, but create fuel strong enough to power stoves, cars, and maybe even small factories. A single home could generate hydrogen during the day, store it, and use it at night when the silence falls over the panels. Farms might run equipment without diesel, relying instead on fuel made right above the fields. Remote villages could step away from fragile grids, holding their own supply of energy in simple tanks. The idea is not only about technology, it is about freedom. Freedom from price swings, from distant pipelines, from reliance on fuels pulled from deep earth. To take water, air, and sunlight, and turn them into the spark of daily life, feels almost like capturing a piece of the future. A flame born quietly, where we live. The story of solar hydrogen modules is not finished. For now, they remain fragile, costly, and limited. Yet, their presence on rooftops shows a path that once seemed impossible. It may take years, even decades, before they spread widely. But each experiment, each quiet panel splitting water with light, carries a hint of what might come. Humanity has always searched for new ways to harness the sun's power. This is another step in that long journey. The question that lingers is simple. When the time comes, would you place one on your own roof?